Okay, so here I am just with our extracted mesh here, and I'm just going here and pulling this down, these little points. As you, if you recall, we made this, I made this so that um, this would be kind of extra, you know, pulled out from the mesh. So it's going to be a little bit of a process here to go in and just kind of pull these points so that we have, you know, a nice um, straight uh, kind of indentation here. So I'm just going to pull these around. Um, it's like I said, it's a pro it's a little bit of a laborious process to grab these pieces and pull them. Um, it probably isn't that bad if I were to mask off the bottom pieces, but I'm just going to make sure I'm kind of happy with this flow. It's very easy to kind of lose track of the flow here. Um, so it's really, you know, it's just kind of a, you know, keep track of every little thing and, um, Basically, we're just moving individual points around, and luckily there aren't too many points to move, but there are a few. <laughs> there are enough that it's a bit of a bummer. Um, and uh, so, again, if I just, were, if you look at the inside here, it's looking a little goofy because we have to, well, keep pulling this down. Um, and that's one of, one of the things that I've, I've learned, much to my chagrin, is that one of the things that you have to uh, be c comfortable with is that uh, for a good portion of the time when you're working on, a, on something, um, it's going to look bad. Like for a good portion of the time, um, the trick is, and the hope is that you know you you have enough of an idea or confidence in that idea that when things are looking bad, you can at least keep your head about it and you know recognize that well it's only looking bad now because you know I haven't subdivided it yet or because I haven't um, gotten these faces where they're supposed to be yet. And this is a again this is a bit of a process, and I'm not really. Uh, thinking this is probably fun for you, but I'm going to pause the video here and just get this stuff in place. Um, and when I come back, hopefully we can bring them over to our other mesh and then uh, and get it going. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so I, I grabbed these bits and I moved them in a little bit here. Now, but watch what happened. Now, if you look closely at these edges, especially the ones around this light green here, you can see a little bit of a dotted line here. And that's because ZBrush, when it makes these into a poly adaptive skin, does us the great favor of creasing them so that when we subdivide it, as you can see, those edges remain true. But here you can see we don't no such luck here on the side. So we need to crease these edges here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to hide. Let's just make sure I have, have the right spot, the right thing hidden here. I'm going to hide these groups. Okay. So I have just this group selected. What I want to keep is this edge sharp. So I'm going to go from the side view here and go to my selection tool, my selection lasso, hold down control and shift and click. And now I'm going to start, hold down alt so I can get rid of these faces. I'm going to take my time here. I want to make sure I don't accidentally get rid of the ones I want to keep. Okay. And get rid of this one last guy here. Okay. So I'm going to grab these faces here. I'm going to go up under my geometry tab and hit crease. Okay, so now when I subdivide this, you see this edge is being held much more nicely. So now, of course, we need to do the same for these other guys. So the selection lasso is your friend in this case. I'm just going to get rid of all these. And let's zoom in here and control shift and get rid of, oops, let's just get rid of these guys. All right, so let's grab these, these guys, increase these. Um, and then let's subdivide. So again, looking better here on the outside. Have to do the same thing on the inside here. So I think what I have to do is, let's see, let's just grab um, all these faces here and hit hide them. And we can just get rid of the green entirely. And let's, that was a mistake. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. So what I want to do is actually just grab this, these faces right here. So I want this corner to be creased. So we'll crease that. I think that's how it works. Let's see. So now if we subdivide this, okay, so that that's nice and sharp. So as you can see, you know, a little bit at a time. This is a this is a, a bit of a tedious process here. Um, let's see what happens here when I subdivide this. Okay, so it's this little corner here which is which is getting pulled in. So it's on the inside of this guy here. So there we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm definitely not going to make you have to watch this, but um, oops, trying to get me to uh, trying to get this green group here to remain behind. Okay, and you can see this at this corner. There's no crease. So 
You're gonna hold down Control and Shift and isolate. Oops, Control and Shift and uh, hit F so I can find this stuff. Control Shift and Alt and hide all this. Okay, these two on tops and bottoms are being visible. So how about I just crease those? So it's gonna be a, really kind of a trial and error thing. You just crease until you see you don't need to crease anymore. Um, and you can see the front here, the top here is looking pretty good, but I have to go in. So what I can do here is just, you know, like I said, go through and, and find the edges which need to be creased and crease them. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. As you can see though, for the most part, this top part looks great. So we're gonna do the same thing to the bottom part so that when we incorporate this into our mesh, um, it'll look the way we want it to look. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through and crease the edges I need to crease and I'm going to <laughs> mercifully not make you watch. And then at the next lesson, we will really bring this into our mesh and uh, make it look uh, just awesome. So I'll see you then.